Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I want to show you the most important preferences to know in Reaper. One of the biggest complaints I get from newer Reaper users is that Reaper doesn't behave like this or respond like that. And in almost every case, it's because the preference to do that hasn't been chosen. Unfortunately, the downside to having so many options in Reaper is that they can't all be active at once. So you have to choose how you want Reaper to behave, and much of that is in the preferences. Now there's too many preferences in Reaper to go over all of them in this video, so I've chosen the most important ones, or the ones I believe many users didn't realize were there or are available to be changed. So let's dig in and check out the preferences to know. We'll go to our preferences right down here. Now we're gonna do this in the order from top down, but we'll get to all the important ones. So in the general tab, I wanna show you import configuration and export configuration. Here's how we can save our preferences. And it's a good idea to save them when we're happy with them, or if we're going to a friend's house who's also using Reaper, we can bring our configuration with us. So we'd save it right here, and it gives us options to save our configuration, which is our preferences, or our themes, plugin presets, and so on. Hit save, give it a name, save it. Then we can recall it right from here. Import it, here they are, and open them back up. That'll save our preferences in case your computer crashes and you need to get them back, or if you're bringing Reaper to another studio. The next thing I wanna show you is the undo settings. Now, there's a whole bunch to choose from, but the most important one I wanna show you right now is the option over here. Create undo points for item track selection, time selection, and edit cursor. I believe by default these are turned on, but I found them a bit annoying. For instance, if we choose it for item track selection, and we select some tracks like this one and this one, if we hit undo, the first undo is our track selection. So it goes back to that, undo it again, it goes back to that. Now usually that's not a big deal and it clogs up the undos. For doing a lot of editing, we have to go through all the track selection as well. So I find that a bit annoying, so I like to turn that off. So over here, create undo points for item track selection. I turn them off. There's also one for time selection. So if we select this and then get rid of it, we can undo and it comes back. Again, if that's too much and you don't need to save that stuff, we can just turn it off right here. And the same thing for edit cursor. Now there's one other preference in the general tab that I want to show you. Under advanced system tweaks, there's an option over here, allow track envelope routing windows to stay open. I believe by default, this is turned off, but again, sometimes that can be annoying. I'll show you why. If it's turned off, and we open up a routing window like this, clicking over here hides it. So if we want to keep that open, change the preference over here. Allow track envelope routing windows to stay open. And now when we choose these, they stay open even if we click outside of them, like here. Not the biggest deal, but it can be a pain or annoying every time they close when we want to click somewhere else. So that's the general tab. The next preference tab I want to show you is track send defaults. This decides what happens when we create new tracks or new sends. Tracks up here and sends down here. Let's start with tracks. Let's delete these two tracks here. And let's adjust the recording configuration for new tracks. Right now it's set to input one. Let's move this over. So if I make a new track, the input for this is set to input one. But we could change that 
by default. Let's delete this. Go over here and choose our kick mic, our snare mic. Or if we're doing a bunch of vocals, we could choose our vocal mic. So now every time we make a new track, hit apply. It opens up with our input set to our vocal mic. So it'll save us a bunch of time when we create new tracks. And we could do more than just the input. We could also change the monitor mode. Right now it's turned off. So any new track we create, delete this one, the monitor mode is off. And we could change it here to monitor input or tape style, but we have to do that each time. And if you prefer to use monitor input, you don't want to have to do that every time you create a track. So instead, delete that, go to here, and choose monitor input. Apply it, create a new track, it's set to vocal mic right there, and our monitoring mode is already set to input right here. Or we could choose tape style, monitor input tape style, apply that. Let's delete this track and create a new one. And it's set to tape style. Monitor input tape auto style. We could also choose stereo tracks, multi-channel tracks, or MIDI tracks. If we're doing a lot of MIDI tracks at once, choose this, or MIDI inputs. Let's choose all channels, apply it. Every time we create a new track, its input is set to MIDI, all channels. So if we know we're doing a lot of MIDI tracks all at once, and we don't want to reset our input every time, just change this first, and it'll save a lot of time when creating new tracks. We could also choose to have our track armed and record automatically. We could do that here, or we could do it here. It's the same thing. So now, create a new track, it's already record armed. Which when dealing with MIDI, it's probably how you want to set it up. So it's already good to go. But let's put this back for me to monitor input and vocal. Apply, create a new track. It's good to go with the vocal and monitor input. So that's for default tracks. But we could also do things for default sends, right down here. Now I'm not sure how it's set up by default, but you're still gonna wanna change this depending on what you're doing. So the send default right now is set to infinity. It's also set post fader, which is how you'd set it up for reverb or delay sends, where you have an effect on a return set to 100%, and you wanna send some sound to it based on the level on that track. That'll be post fader. So if it's set up like this, and we create a new send, which we could do right here, add new send, back to track one, it's gonna to default to post fader, and the volume's all the way down, which is a good idea for most effects. You don't want the reverb or delay or chorus to be sending full level right from the beginning. It could be too hot. So you could bring it up slowly, without worrying about that. But if you're using it for something like headphone sends, you might want to start with it full volume. So let's delete this send, go back to our preferences, and let's change this to zero dB, or zero. Now if we create a new send, back to track one, the volume is full up, which is good for headphone sends that are post fader where we keep the mix exactly the same, but each track is sending full level to the headphones. But there are times where you wanna create a unique headphone mix, different levels for the headphones versus the main mix. In those situations, you'd wanna switch this to either pre-fader post effects, after the effects, or sometimes pre-fader and pre-effects. Let's do that. Delete this. Go back to our preference and change this to pre fader post effects or pre effects. Let's choose this one though. 
And in these situations, you're going to create your own custom mix. So for that, we'll put this back to infinity or fully down. Now, if we create a send on here, it starts out all the way down or infinity and it's pre-fader. Now, obviously you could change all these things after the fact, right on each send. But if you're creating a whole bunch of them at once, it's much quicker to do it in the preferences because it's already set right down here. And we could also do the same thing with hardware outputs. If we're sending things to hardware, we could change the level by default. So that's the track send defaults. And this tutorial has run a bit longer than I originally planned. So I cut it up into five pieces. This is the end of part one. Let's go to part two. Thank mm -hmm. you.